The first video in section 2.2, which by the way is a long section, will talk about solving linear equations in one variable. So we have the steps here, which I will let you read. You can pause the video if you'd like, and I'll talk about the steps as we go through our examples. Let's start with example number one. We want to solve the following equation. Step one, clear any fractions by multiplying each term by the lowest common denominator. Now, we will skip this step because we don't have a lowest common denominator. So step one, in this case, we will skip. Step two, remove any parentheses using the distributor property. Now, we do have a parentheses. The distributor property states that any parentheses that has uh, a coefficient in the front of the parentheses or at the end of the parentheses, we will multiply each term in the parentheses by that coefficient. It's very important that we write each, uh, at each step, we rewrite the problem. Uh, performing whatever step we're on. So we're on the step that uh, is distribution, so we will only perform distribution. So we have 8x minus 7 plus 3. 3 times 2x is 6x. 3 times negative 6 is negative 18 minus 4x. Step 2, we've removed any parentheses using the distributor property. Okay, that's done. Let's go to step 3. Combine like terms on each side of the equation. So the, the equal sign, it splits up the left side of the equation from the right side. And if we have any like terms, so on the left side we have negative 7 plus 3, those are like terms, we can uh, add or subtract them. By, so in other words, combine them. In this case, negative 7 plus 3 is negative 4, so we get 8x minus 4 on the left side. On the right side, we have 6x minus 4x, that's 2x minus 18. So we had our like terms, negative 7 plus 3, that gave us negative 4 on the left side. And on the right side, we had a 6x and a negative 4x, that gave us a 2x minus 18. That was step 3. Step 4, use the addition property of equality to get all the variables on one side and all the constants on the other side. So in step 4, it doesn't matter in equations which side we put the variables on and which side we move the, the constants to, uh, but in this case, let's move the variables to the left side. So in order to move the variables to the left, I am going to subtract 2x from both sides. 8x minus 2x is 6x, I bring down the negative 4, 2x minus 2x is 0, and I bring down the negative 18. So I move the variables to the left, which means I have to move the constants to the other side. So this time we, I'm going to add 4 to both sides, and this gives me 6x on the left, negative 18 plus 4 is negative 14 on the right. Lastly, since the x is being multiplied by 6, we divide both sides by 6. And we get x equals to negative 14 over 6. Now, of course, every fraction needs to be reduced. So in order to re reduce this fraction, we think about what is the largest number that can divide 14 and 6? Um, so 2 can. So we divide the 14 by 2 and we divide the 6 by 2. It's very important that we divide both the numerator and denominator by the same number. So this gives you x equals to negative 7 divided by 3. And in set notation, we can write our solution. It can be written in a set notation like this. So our solution set is negative 7 thirds. Take a look at these steps. If anything doesn't make sense to you, uh, please think about that, and we will go over this in class. OK, next example we will work on in class. Now here, we have something a little bit different. In the first example, and even the second one, we did not have any fractions. In the third example, we do. So let's go back to our steps. Step one says clear any fractions by multiplying each term by the lowest common denominator. What does that mean? Well, let's take a look at our denominators. Our denominators are 5, 2, and 10. And we want to find the lowest 
common denominator between 5, 2, and 10. So by definition, the lowest common denominator is a number that 5, 2, and 10 can all go into. So here's what I mean by that. Here's the easiest way to find the lowest common denominator. I'm going to list out the, the multiples of 5. We have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, etc., etc. This is the multiples of 2. We got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, etc., etc. Multiples of 10 are 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. The lowest common denominator, the word lowest means we want the smallest. The word common means we want to find the smallest number that all three of these have in common. And that is 10. 10 is the first number that, they, that, that all three uh, of these multiplication um, tables have in common. So our lowest common denominator in this case is going to be 10. So list all the multiples of 5, list all the multiples of 2, list all the multiples of 10, and find the first number that they all have in common, which is going to be 10. And that is our lowest common denominator. So step one says, we uh, let's 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 rewrite the problem. We have two over five plus v equals to one over two minus three over ten. First step says multiply each term by the lowest common denominator. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to multiply the first term. And when you multiply any term, we are always multiplying the numerator. So let me rephrase that. Multiply each numerator by the least common denominator. So I multiply the, the first numerator by 10. That is our lowest common denominator. Even though the second um, term does not have a fraction, I still have to multiply it. I have to multiply each term by 10. The next one, I only multiply the numerator by 10. And same thing over here, I only multiply the numerator by 10. So when you multiply each term, only multiply the numerator by your LCD, which is 10. Now let's simplify. 10 divided by 5 is 2. So 5 goes into 10 2 times. And 2 times 2 is 4. V times 10? Oh, you know what? Let me do that in red. So 5 goes into 10 2 times. 2 times 2 is 4 v times 10, there's no denominator, so that's just going to be 10v. Over here, uh, 10 divided by 2 is 5. In other words, 2 goes into 10 5 times, so the 2 crosses out, and 2 goes into 10 5 times, so 10 divided by 2 is 5, 5 times 1 is 5. Once we have uh, the numerator, we multiply the numerators together. Uh, last one, 10 divided by 10 is 1, and 3 times 1 is 3. So that's our problem. Let's simplify this. On the left side, um, we don't have any like terms, so that this is going to remain 4 plus 10v. On the right side, 5 minus 3 is 2. Now I move the 4 to the right, so I subtract 4 from each side. And this gives me 10v is equal to negative 2. I divide both sides by 10. And my answer is v equals to negative 2 over 10. Of course, this needs to be reduced. So we think about what is the smallest number that can divide 2 and 10. In, th in this case, it'll, it'll be 2. So negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So our answer is negative 1 fifth. And if we write those in, in an uh, interval, uh, in a set notation form, our solution set is negative 1 fifth. Let's try the next one. This one we will do in class, but I'll start off by just finding the least common denominator. So here, our first denominator is 7. I'm going to write the multiples of 7. I have 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42. For 5, I have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. And then for 35, I just have 35, 70, 105, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Let's find the first number in these multiples that all three have in common. So I can see that there's a 35, there's a 35, and then there's a 35. So our lowest common denominator is going to be 35. Okay, now we'll finish off the question in class. Let's take a look at our next example. Our denominator here, we have x, and here we have 8.
Now, the only way to have a lowest common denominator that contains both of these terms is to multiply those. So our lowest common denominator is just going to be 8x. Okay, so let me rewrite the problem. I have x plus 1 over x minus 1 over 8, and that equals to negative 3 over x. My least common denominator is 8x. So what do I do with my least common denominator? I multiply each numerator by the LCD, which is 8x. So I multiply this numerator, multiply this numerator, and multiply this numerator, each by the LCD. And remember to always multiply the numerator by the LCD. Let's simplify. Here, we have x divided by x. So we know that x divided by x is 1, so these are going to cross out, which means we're left with 8 times x plus 1. Here we have 8 divided by 8 which crosses out and that just gives us x times 1. Here we have x divided by x so those cross out and we have negative 3 times 8. So now if we distribute 8 times x is 8x, 8, 8 times 1 is 8, minus x times 1 is x. Negative 3 times 8, that's negative 24. Let's combine our like terms. We have on the left side of the equation, uh, and the, the right side of the equation, those are our two separate sides. On the left side, we have 8x minus 1x. 8 minus 1 is 7, so we get 7x plus 8 equals to negative 24. Then we move the negative 8 to the right, since the variables are already on the left side. So this gives you 7x equals to negative 32. Divide both sides by 7. So we get x equals to negative 32 over 7. And our solution set will be x equals to negative 32 over 7. Okay, let's take a look at one more example. We have 7 over x plus 1 minus 1 half equals negative 8 over 5x plus 5. Now the first thing we have to do here is we have to factor the denominator. We have 5x plus 5. They both have a common factor of 5. So we have this. We have 7 over x plus 1 minus 1 over 2 equals to negative 8 over 5 times x plus 1. Our first step is to factor out the least, uh, factor out the common factor, which in this case is 5. Now let's find our least common denominator. We have x plus 1, we have a 2, and we have a 5. And this x plus 1 is already here. So I don't have to write that twice. So with 2, I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. With 5, I have 5, 10, 15, 20, et cetera, et cetera. Our least common denominator is going to be 10. But there's also an x plus 1. So our least common denominator between the 5 and the 2 is going to be 10 times x plus 1, which means I will have to multiply each numerator by x plus 1 and also by 10. Same thing over here, 10 times x plus 1. The order doesn't matter. Same thing over here, 10 times x plus 1. Okay, now let's see what happens. Here, the x plus 1s are going to cross out. And 7 times 10, that will give you 70. Here, uh, the, the 2 goes into 10 5 times. So we have negative 1, so the 1 and 5 they multiply, and then we have x plus 1. Over here, the x plus 1's divide to be 1, and 5 goes into 10 2 times, so we have uh, negative 8 times 2. So we have 70, if you distribute this, we have minus 5x minus 5, uh, negative 8 times 2 is negative 16. I'm going to do this fast, combine our like terms. So 70 minus 5 is 65 minus 5x equals to negative 16. Subtract 65 from both sides. So this gives you negative 5x equals to negative 81, which means x equals to 81 over 5. So our solution set is going to be 81 over 5. All right, now take a look at this, and um, you know, of course, we'll go over this again. And in the next example, we will do in class, and that takes care of part one of the lesson.